Okay, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. We are so happy to uh, be blessed by your presence this morning. And I'm trying to get the music to go off. A minute. Okay. Um, I thank everyone for coming today. Um, happy Ramadan for those of us who are practicing Ramadan in the month of December. And we are going to uh, talk about why we uh, fast in December. We're going to talk about uh, you know, what happens in the body when we fast and learn what happens um, you know, uh, on a holistic level, uh, down to a cellular level in the body, uh, what the power of fasting and prayer does for us. Uh, so we'll talk about all those things and then we'll open up the meeting for a fireside chat to allow everyone to uh, uh, provide input and support for each other. Uh, so we want this to be warm and inviting uh, for everyone to speak uh, after the presentation. So um, why don't we go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm Dr. Bronner. I'm your naturopathic doctor at Goodness for Life Center. And uh, I uh, am the um, leader of our wellness group on Facebook. And uh, we, as a part of our uh, outreach at Goodness for Life Center, we started this group in the beginning of the year and we have over 740 members now and we're really excited about that and we thank everyone for all the support you have given in in keeping our group going and um, with informative content on a daily basis and then on a monthly basis we have our free monthly webinar so uh, today is our day to talk about the power of fasting and prayer um, we meet the first Saturday of every month, and so um, I'm really happy that uh, I'm blessed to have made it through to December um, with everyone, and uh, it's, um, it's just unbelievable how fast this year has gone, but uh, we are all here, and we're here together, which makes us stronger. Um, when we do things together, when we set goals for our, our health together, uh, we are most successful. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, fasting uh, combined with prayer is one of the most powerful and fastest gateways to self-healing and holistic well-being. So spiritually, it brings uh, you closer to the oneness uh, with the presence of God that lives within you. It's the place where I feel the most safe and secure. So spiritually, when I fast um, and pray, it just, um, it's like um, a highway. It's like a, a immediate highway to my highest level of consciousness. And so, and, and the longer that I fast and pray and, and the more consistent I am, the closer I get and the better I feel. And I know that you've all experienced the same thing mentally as well. It provides more clarity, focus and concentration on what you're doing. Uh, so if I have anything that's very important to me, uh, if I'm speaking in front of a large group or, or uh, doing something really special, I always fast beforehand because it really helps me to think better, to speak more clearly and to focus and concentrate better on what I'm doing. And physically, when you stop eating, your body acts as if it's a self-cleaning oven. It automatically starts eliminating waste and starts repairing um, at the cellular level. So we'll talk about that today. Uh, we'll really get into uh, the, some more detail about what happens in the body. 
And then emotionally, you become more even keeled and balanced. Things don't bother you as much. Um, your, uh, your emotions are more balanced uh, overall. And then socially, you have more room for others because you're not so self-indulged. And then financially, I'd say it gives you more discipline with overindulging, making sure that you're not overindulging with spending money that you don't have or going out to eat at restaurants and things like that. Um, so financially, um, during a time when you're fasting, you can save uh, and be more um, balanced, you know, uh, all over. Your whole being uh, is more balanced when you are, uh, every aspect of your being is level. And so that's what fasting and prayer does for me, especially. And um, fasting is one of the quickest ways to increase the elimination of waste, again, and enhance the reparative processes of the body all over. It provides, it gives you clearer skin. If you have eczema or psoriasis or um, uh, any skin condition, you'll notice that with a really good fast, you'll be, your skin will clear up. Um, it also increases uh, uh, elimination of toxins and waste that build up in your body. Uh, it repairs your tissues. It decreases pain and inflammation in the body. And it increases concentration and relaxation, as I said before. But I think the, the greatest benefit is the satisfaction that you're playing a major role in optimizing your health this way. Um, rather than uh, just taking medication and feeling like I'm healthy because I'm taking my medication, that's not the same thing as taking control of or optimizing your health in a way in where you are uh, doing everything in your power through exercise, prayer, fasting, uh, eating right, um, doing all the things that it takes to, um, to be optimally well. So um, the benefit is that this is one of the most powerful things that you can do on your own that doesn't involve drugs or medications or side effects that can, um, you know, uh, does it only treats the symptoms versus treating the underlying cause where fasting and prayer treats the underlying cause not just the symptoms of whatever you're experiencing so there's been a lot of research into fasting and it's been reported since 1880 uh, in medical journals that um, fasting and the treatment of, of high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, mental disease, skin disease, obesity, uh, cardiovascular disease, GI trouble, uh, just about every ailment that there is out there, fasting and prayer is one of the most powerful treatments. Um, over a period of time where you can literally uh, reverse and repair these uh, conditions in the body just through fasting and prayer. So what happens in the body when you fast? This is, a, um, this is a, just a quick video that um, I think is worth watching. Uh, so I'll go ahead and share that with you now. It's the holy month season again. This year, Muslims in Qatar are fasting for approximately 15 hours. But can fasting benefit the human body in any way? The answer to that is a resounding yes. With that, here are some of the many advantages of eating and drinking nothing during the holy month. Fasting for two times a week can reduce chances of developing Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, which are on the rise. Alterations to one's diet impacts brain functionality. Overfed brains are more likely to become impaired, according to neuroscientists. A person who fasts empowers his brain, boosts its protein production, and catalyzes the growth of neurons and bonds between neurons, causing improvement in one's memory. Those who fast are more likely to enjoy enhanced nerve cells that repair the DNA. Fasting can protect the immune system as repairing from food consumption helps stem cells self-renew from a dormant state. In 
2007, a scientific review of studies centered on fasting revealed that fasting is an effective means of reducing cancer as well as cardiovascular diseases. Fasting also has the potential to treat diabetes. that was short and sweet but um it basically uh confirms everything that we we know and everything that the messenger has taught us so i just wanted to kind of uh there's there's a lot of information that has been shared amongst us and um, there's some information that i really wanted to that inspired me and gave me strength during this time in which we fast during the month of Ramadan in December. And so I wanted to read something that the Honorable Silas Muhammad uh, spoke to us about back in 1996 at the Billy Holiday Theater. And um, the words are so powerful that I think it's worth uh, us reviewing today to help us to understand why we fast why our Ramadan is in the month of December. Aslam alaikum, and I'm reading quote, Messenger Elijah Muhammad established December as a month for us to celebrate and observe Ramadan. He set the time December, says he, for two reasons, two basic reasons, the first of which Ramadan here in America and his being here in America, having been taught by Master Farad Muhammad, marks the end of the pilgrimage to Mecca, Arabia, that the Muslims make. That his presence, his work, his mission, and you, the last to receive the teachings of Islam and for whom the teachings of Islam and whom the teachings of Islam were intended have been found. There is no longer, therefore, a need to make the pilgrimage to circle about the Kaaba or the black stone in Mecca, Arabia. You are that black stone, that the stone in Mecca, Arabia represents. So that tradition, that ritual, that paganism is done away with. You are the original man who established it. You have been found. You do not have to do that anymore. Secondly, said he, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, to whom all honor is forever due, established our celebration of Ramadan in December because this is the day that the white man, the Caucasian here in America, has most used to trick you and, and trick and fool you. He, the white man, claims that Jesus was born on December the 25th and that Jesus is your savior. He, Messenger Elijah Muhammad, wants you to know that Jesus was not born on December the 25th, that he was born the first or second week of September. And to keep you from participating in that trickery, this mockery of Allah's divine plan you do not celebrate any moment of a so-called Christmas day during the month of December. You are to fast during that period from sunup to sundown in rejection of this evil and wicked society. Turn your back on every moment of it, said he, and I support him. Little children, let no one, Christian or Orthodox Muslim, whoever he or she may be, ever in life through eternity deter you from this celebration of Ramadan. If you must lose a limb, lose the limb. If you must lose an eye, lose the eye. If you must lose the life, lose the life, but take the life with you. Don't let anyone bamboozle your, you anymore, any longer, forever be steadfast in Ramadan. You do not eat until the sun goes down in the evening. Do not be in a hurry to eat when the sun goes down. Savior this great wisdom. Savor this great moment. Savor this rebellion we launch against America with its wickedness. Take no part in America's corruption. 
children honor this time throughout all eternity in your remembrance of Messenger Elijah Muhammad. Coming December, which is at that time, it was approximately a month and a half away. Remember these words, this is our Ramadan. You do not celebrate any other Ramadan. You do not make any compromise whatsoever. I shall not. Silas Muhammad, God must be first, Brooklyn, New York at the Billy Holiday Theater in 1996. And so I savor, I am savoring all of those words. And it gave me, when I read it, it just gave me uh, more conviction. It gave me more motivation, more confidence, and more strength to, uh, to practice Ramadan and practice it correctly. So um, in, uh, during this month, as read by the, uh, as spoken by the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad in How to Eat to Live, says during this month, eat before day and after the sun goes down if you wish, but not during the daylight hours. This also goes for drinking. Drink whatever you are going to drink either before dawn or after dark. The eating before dawn is for those of us who love to eat breakfast in the morning. But if you eat one meal a day, you may eat that meal either before dawn or after dark. It is better for your health, however, to eat one meal after dark. In the, this month of fasting, we shall keep our minds and our hearts clean and not indulge in the eating of meats, land meats. We may eat fish and such fat products which come from land animals such as butter and cheese. And that's how to eat to live books one, uh, pages 45 to 46. So I wanna show this video also, and this was made by one of the uh, believers, uh, Afro descendant Ali, and I think it's beautiful. And I wanna share with you now, if you haven't seen it on Facebook already, let's listen to it now.
I hope that you enjoyed that as much as I did. And uh, I hope you were able to read the words. Uh, they were passing by pretty quickly, but I think you uh, should have been able to capture the message overall. So in How to Eat to Live, again, uh, pages 45 through 46, it continues on. Uh, in this month, we should keep our minds on Allah who came in the person of Master Farat Muhammad, my God and your God and my savior and deliverer and your savior and deliverer to whom be praises forever for giving us life after mental death. And I'm gonna mute someone here. Um, Keep up prayer and let us all be grateful to Allah for his coming in the person of Master Farah Muhammad through the month of December and every month. And during this month, let there be no quarreling or disputing in our homes or abroad. And so um, in, the, in the book of the Holy Quran, it also talks about um, fasting being prescribed for us. It says, oh, you who believe, fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you so that you may guard against evil for a certain number of days. But whoever among you is sick or on a journey, he shall fast a like number of other days. And those who find it extremely hard may affect redemption by feeding a poor man. So Whoever does good spontaneously, it is better for him. And that you fast is better for you if you know. So basically uh, what the message is saying here is that if there's for some reason, because you're ill, um, that you cannot fast for whatever reasons, then, um, then the Quran is basically saying that you can excuse yourself for the certain number of days until you are well enough to fast again and um, do it on a different days other than the, the days that are prescribed uh, for everyone. So um, there's, there's never a time, we, you know, even though we fast in December as a whole, uh, if you cannot, it's not that you can't fast do the same fast in January or in February or whenever you're well enough to fast. Uh, and so we can talk about that later too, um, as to uh, anyone who's having trouble fasting and why and what you should do um, as a result. Uh, so I just wanted to bring that 
forward. Uh, in Isaiah, in the Bible, it says that as a result of fasting, it says, then your light shall break forth like the morning, your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. So in essence, fasting is there to heal you. Um, so even if you're sick, that you may be able to fast. Maybe that's the reason why you need to fast. So those are the things that uh, we can talk about on a one-to-one -one basis as to your health when it comes to fasting, okay? Um, so it's really about discipline. Um, we should be used to eating one meal a day anyway. Um, I think the challenge for me is that I'm having to just adjust my schedule a little bit. So for me, when I look up sunrise and sunset for the month of December, sunrise in, on the East Coast in Delaware ranges from 7.03 a.m. to 7.22 a.m. We're talking about for the whole month of December. Each day, it made the time changes a little. Sunset is from 4.40 p.m. to 4.50 p.m. So the fasting period is probably, it's just about nine hours and 20 minutes uh, to 30 minutes. So really that's not a long time to go without eating. Uh, it's not that we're fasting for the entire day for this fast, even though we do fast uh, for the entire day for three, at least three times uh, or three days out of the month. And I try to do it at the end of every month as we've been instructed. However, um, this Ramadan is really, you know, um, when you think about it, it's very easy to do. If we just get up, if, you, if I wasn't getting up, like sometimes I don't get up before seven when I should. So it's kind of helping me to get up when I wake up. And I usually wake up at 6 a.m. So if I want to drink water or go and drink a cup of coffee or drink some water with lemon and cayenne pepper, which is a good way to kick off the detox, uh, you could do that as long as I'm doing it before seven. If I get up at six, I'm okay to do that. And then for sunset, uh, you know, just planning your day in a way wherein you are um, um, doing the adjustments that need to be made to be made so that you're not tempted to eat if you eat earlier than four. If, and but most of us don't anyway, so it really shouldn't be a problem. But that's what I want to talk about: uh, what issues people are having, and let's kind of help each other resolve those things. Um, so let's chat. I'm going to go ahead and stop the share and turn the recorder off. And we'll talk about some of the challenges that, uh, that we are having uh, individually. And uh, maybe we can help each other out. So how are things going so far? We're on the fourth day. And uh, for those of you who are fasting, uh, let us know how it's working out for you. And if you've never fasted before uh, and you are, would like to know how to fast or when to fast, uh, feel free to ask questions now and we'll open up the uh, meeting. So, did I turn the, let me make sure I turn the recording off.